there's definitely a pattern where you're doing the drifter, you're crushing it up, but then you're revisiting it later when the sound is changing. You're doing Rome, then doing leaving Rome. You're setting John Holt, but then you're adding strings to it. So you're kind of going back and revisiting. Is that planful? Is that part of your like approach to music? Well, yes, I, uh, sometimes you put a song out and it's too early, you know? It's ahead of its time. And this is what I, I found out with some of the songs that you release. And when I, when, I, when I find it that way, that I put something out and it's not going, I just relax, put it down, and then try to reintroduce it again, you know? Maybe with something else mix in, you know, or change along the way. But uh, sometimes it's because of the people love the stuff so much that they want more of it. As they say, a good thing is, you know, you can't do too much of it, you know. So, so sometimes they force me to go back, they want a new version, they want a new that, so I try to see what we can do to make it refresh it, you know, and things like that. We do a DJ, we do an instrumental, different arrangement, you know, and uh, but keep the, the rhythm section there tight, you know, just the same. So that's it, you know, for getting different versions, do a dub version of this and, you know, change it in different areas because I believe the drifter is the most common use rhythm. Everybody tried to use it. When I did the first uh, drifter, it was done, the rhythm was done on a two-track tape, right? We put the uh, the guitars and, and so on and one, and then the drums and tied them on one track. But as time goes on, technology improves. We had, when I started it was one track, then we go to two track that we could do and mix down and voice. Then we go to four tracks, then we go to eight tracks, then we go to 16 tracks, then we go to 24 tracks. Mm -hmm. And then we stopped there for a long while because, uh, you know, we could spread the music out, you get a wider separation of, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, after doing that, <coughs> I decided to go back and redo the drifter in a different, you know, uh, a one, one drop beat, you know. So I uh, went back in the studio and I re-record the drifter and Art Don't Leap you know, and uh, that was very good also, very because it's, it's a little different pattern, you know, the, 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 you can, the drifter is there, but with a, a variation, you know, about, uh, but then I could get more separation when you mix, so it would be more, it would be a tighter, you know, mix when you do it, you know, than the, uh, than the regular, the first drifter, but still people, <laughs> still stick to the, <laughs> the first one, you know? Dub conference series, there's a lot of time put into that. Oh, and oh. a lot of King Tubby mixes <laughs> are not King Tubby mixes. Uh, exactly, that's true. Yeah. That's true. But yours that's true. is, yeah. clearly, clearly. And then you have the bonuses of the strings that you yeah, have. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. can manipulate that. The yeah. horns, you yeah. have liberal yeah. use of horns, yeah. and, and all the great musicians. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. Were they all done in one grouping or different times? Uh, we did, uh, it took us, well the difference about my uh, dub is that I, to go to King Tubbies, he used a four track machine. And then I had to mix down from the 16 track to a four track. I timed the, the rhythm, the horns, uh, you know, and the string in a different, in different track. So when we went there, then we mixed from that into the dub, you know, into the dub style. Mm -hmm. And uh, because I say to him, well, you know, I want to use the strings. Well, it's the first ever used strings in dub and all like that, you know. Because I found that there was place for it to, to use, to, to spread it around, you know, that it can be done. And uh, I believe we spent about, it was, the first one I did was volume one, two, it, it's, uh, it's about, pretty uh, about a, a week to do everything, to do uh, all three albums. And we uh, had a good time, 
really enjoy time doing it. I try to put the quality of my stuff to the high standard. I could decide myself. Because even sometimes I will go and mix a song and I will mix it five, ten times before I put it out, you know? Oh, really? Yeah, because I, I, I like to listen back when I mix and, you know, and I listen late at night to know that, you know, I can get everything in and at the right, you know, depth or, you know, hearing, you know, things in the song. I don't like to use something and you can't hear it after. A lot of people I see mix and they, they put a song but they, they use certain instruments that don't come in at all. And the other thing is that uh, at the end finish, and I hate it because sometimes you do a, a song and you go through, the quality is good and at the pressing plant, they mess it up. Mm -hmm. They use uh, the vinyl, they use not good. They uh, mess up your stampers, and this irritates me, you know? They can ruin the stamper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've had it many times. Mm -hmm. You do a stamper, and now it is so expensive to do vinyl. Yeah, vinyl, it, it's a... Uh, I did a stamper, give to the pressing plan. You gotta pay so much to do it, to cut the acetate, to do the stamper, and, to, and they press 200 record, and it is no good because they mess it up. They use the, the vinyl, they grind up the old vinyl and they put it with the new and then when they go in the press, it press and then this the paper section get in it and just burst the stamper. And some of them they they mess it up otherwise, you know, they a lot of bumps, pimples and all that that come and they want you to accept it. You know? Because you're dealing with that even to this very day. Yeah. You know, I, I'm dealing with it, but, you know, there's so much you can take. Right now, we haven't got a pressing plant in Florida. It's closed down. So you have to be going out to get stuff pressed, which push the cost up more. Whatever you put in is what you get out. You can't draw from the bank what you don't put in. That is life. My parents used to teach me this, say, whatever you put in the bank is that you can draw out, nothing more. You know, and I tell people this, you know, live with that inside of you, you know, that you try to get out what you're, you're going to steal. What you put in is what you get out. You know? So uh, that's my philosophy of, uh, you know, living. Yeah, man, Dennis Swags, when I'm in Cleveland, man, why, yo, you don't know, man, I listen to Rastafari, Jamaica, way, greatest station, you don't know that.